Dear students, today we are going to learn a short story, Mrs. Addis, written by Shaila K. Smith. This is a suspense story with tragic end. Mrs. Addis is the central character in this story. She is a kind mother who proves that kindness is a virtue and forgiveness is a great human quality. In this video lecture, you will learn new words from the story, characters and setting of the story and also line to line analysis of the entire story in English. Let's begin. See the list of new words. Sussex is a county in the South England. Tongue of land means a long stretch of land. Shammer woods means wood or forest. Twilight means period between evening and night when the sky is faintly illuminated. Perks of fire means stars. Del Monden is the name of village. Close at hand means very close. Nell means death bell. Stooping over means bend over. Cinderwood is name of a forest. Beseechingly means appealingly. Huddle down means shrank oneself. <coughs> Canceron is the name of a town. It is a railway station. Shilling is a former British coin. Unwilling shrug means to raise the shoulders slightly and unwillingly. Momentary means for a short span of time. Dulling means not exciting. Scutney Castle is name of a port or castle. Refuse means shelter. Tongue tied means speechless, unable to speak. Row means Quarrel, sacked means dismissed, rung means held the hand tightly and shook it with sympathy, shivering means shaking slightly because of cold, fear or excitement. Now see the major characters from the story. See the list of characters. Mrs. Addis is the central character of this story. She is a peasant woman. She is small, thin woman, not more than 42 years old. Tom, son of Mrs. Addis. Peter Crouch, Tom's friend. He is a working man, unsuccessful, poor man. The keepers means the guards. There are four keepers in this story. Widdler is one of the keepers. Mrs. Gain. She is a neighbor of Mrs. Addis. These are the major characters in this story. Now setting or location of the story. The story takes place in the northeast Sussex in England. Sussex, you know, is a county in the southern part of England. Shammer Woods, it is name of a forest. Del Monden, name of a village. Cinderwood, name of a wood. Canceron, name of a town. Scutney Castle, name of a castle or fort. These places are mentioned in the story. Information about the writer Shayla K. Smith was an English novelist and poet. Many of her novels were set in the borderlands of Sussex and Kent in the English regional tradition. Her book, The End of the House of Allard, became a bestseller. Now here, information about the writer is given to us. Here we also see photograph of the writer. The story Mrs. Addis 
is about a peasant woman who finds a desperate young man at her doorstep, pleading of her to give him protection from the police. He had been poaching on the nearby estate and in panic he had killed one of the gamekeepers. Now here information about the story is given to us. The entire story is a story of a peasant woman. There is a hard working woman named Mrs. Addis and she is the central character in the story and there came a young man at her doorstep and the young man requests the lady to protect her from the guards. Now we learn all these things in the story. This is a suspense story with a tragic end. Let's begin the story. Mrs. Addis in northeast Sussex a great tongue of land runs into Kent. It is a land of woods, the old hammer woods of the Sussex iron industry and among the woods gleam the hammer ponds. Now here at the beginning of the story the writer speaks about the location of the story. The story happened in the North East Sussex. It is a land of woods. There were many forests in the Sussex region and there are also many ponds. Owing to the thickness of the woods, the road that passes Mrs. Addis's cottage is dark long before the fields beyond. That night there was no twilight and no moon, only a few perks of fire in the black sky above the trees. Now here the writer describes house of Mrs. Addis, that is her cottage and it was night time. The writer tells us that that night there was no twilight and no moon. Now at that time there was no twilight. You know twilight means time duration between evening and night time. And at that time there were only pricks of fire means there were some stars shining in the sky. But what the darkness hid the silence revealed. In the absolute stillness of the night, windless and clear, every sound was distinct, intensified. The distant bark of a dog at Delmondon sounded close at hand and the man who walked on the road could hear the echo of his own footsteps following him like a nail. Now here the writer describes that night. It was very calm and quiet night. The year was there was no wind in the air and every sound was distinct. And there were some dogs barking at a nearby village. There is a reference of Del Mountain village. There were some dogs barking in that village. And that sound looked close at hand. And there was a man walking on the road. And he could hear the echo of his own footsteps. Every now and then he made an effort to go more quietly but the roadside was a mass of thorns and their crackling and rustling were nearly as loud as the thud of his feet on the road. Besides, they made him go slowly and he had no time for that. Now here the writer describes a man walking on that road. The man wanted to walk fast without making noise but it was impossible for him because of there were so many objects on the road there were thorns and there were so many leaves etc because of these things it was impossible for him to walk without making noise when the man came to mrs Addis's cottage he paused a moment only a small patch of grass lie between it and the road 
and he looked in at the lighted uncurtained window he could see mrs addis stooping over the fire taking some pot or kettle of it he hesitated and seemed to wonder he was a big heavy working man not successful judging by the poverty of his appearance now here the writer tells us that the man came to mrs addis's cottage and he paused for a moment he stopped there for a while and he observed from an uncurtained window he saw there was a lady there was mrs addis in the room and she was doing something in the kitchen now here the writer also describes the man he was a big heavy and working man and he was also not a successful person and he was also looking as a poor man for a moment he made as if he would open the window then he changed his mind and went to the door instead the man looked at the window the man looked at the door and he went to the door he did not knock but walked straight in the woman at the fire turned quickly round what he, what you peter crouch she said i didn't hear you knock now the man straight walked to the kitchen the woman at the fire turned quickly round the woman means here mrs addis and surprisingly the woman asked what you peter crouch i didn't hear you knock at the time the man replied i didn't knock ma'am i didn't want anybody to hear how is that i am in trouble his hands were shaking a little what have you done i shot a man mrs addis now the man was peter crouch and he told mrs addis that i did not knock the door because i came here for a different purpose she also told her i am in trouble at that time his hands were shaking he was shivering because of fear what have you done mrs addis asked him i shot a man she directly told the lady i shot a man you yes i shot him you killed him i don't know and again mrs addis asked him did you kill him at that time peter crouch replied i don't know for a moment there was silence in the small stuffy kitchen then the kettle boiled over and mrs addis mechanically put it at the side of the fire she was a small thin woman with a brown hard face on which the skin had dried in innumerable small hair like wrinkles she was probably not more than 42 but life treats some women hard in the agricultural district of sussex and mrs addis's life had been harder than most now after listening the remark from peter crouch there was silence in the kitchen for some time now here the writer also describes the lady she was a small thin woman with a brown hard face and she was not more than 42 the woman was looking like this because of agricultural district of sussex the woman was hard working woman what do you want me to do for you peter crouch she said a little slowly now unhappily or we may say in some anger the woman asked what do you want me to do for you now at that time let me stay here for a bit is there anywhere you can put me till they have gone who's they the keepers and 
ट्विटर का वोच रिक्वेस्टेड मिसेस एडिस दैट लेट मी स्टे हियर फॉर अ वाइल टिल दे हैव गॉन अगेन द वुमन आस्ट हु आर दे नाउ ही सेड दैट दे आर द कीपर्स कीपर्स मीन्स दे आर द गार्ड्स ओ यू हैव हैड अ क्वारल विद द कीपर्स हैव यू यस I was down by cinder wood seeing if I could pick up anything and the keepers found me there were four to one so I used my gun then I ran for it they are after me they can't be far off now and here again peter crouch explained the incident to mrs addis that he went to cinder wood to get something and at that time keepers means the guards so peter crouch they were four and peter crouch was single person so he used his gun and again he requested the lady that they can't be far off now so please help me mrs addis did not speak for a moment crouch looked at her beseechingly Mrs Addis remained remained silent and at that time appealingly Peter Crouch was looking at her see the next page page number 46 you might do it for Tom's sake he said you haven't been an over good friend to Tom snapped Mrs Addis but Tom has been a very good friend to me he would want you to stand by me tonight well i won't say he wouldn't for tom always thought better of you than you deserved maybe you can stay till he comes home tonight then we can hear what he says about it you know peter crouch was tom's friend and because of this friendship peter crouch wanted help from tom's mother Mrs Addis asked him to wait for a while after some time or after an hour Tom will come to home and then we will decide what to do she will be up at work for an hour at and the coast will be clear by then i can get away out of the country where will you go i don't know there is time to think of that Again Peter Crouch told the lady that I will leave this country I will go somewhere and the woman asked where will you go she replied I don't know there is time to think of that well you can think of it in here she said dryly opening a door which led him from the kitchen into the small shed at the back of the cottage they will never guess you were there especially if i tell them i haven't seen you tonight and again mrs addis said dryly that you may stay here at the back of the cottage there was a small room there was a small shed and again she was confident that nobody will guess that he is inside you are a good woman mrs addis i know i am not worth you are standing by me but maybe i would have been different if i had a mother like toms now indirectly here peter crouch praises the lady saying that you are one of the best women she did not speak but shut the door and he was in darkness save for a small ray of light that came through one of the cracks by this light she could see her moving to and fro preparing tom's supper in another hour tom would be home from iron lash farm where he worked every day peter crouch trusted tom to help him for they had been friends when they went together 
to the national school at Lamberhurst, and since then the friendship had not been broken by their very different characters and careers. Afterwards, the man went to that particular room at the back of the cottage, and the woman was preparing supper. Supper means evening meal for her son Tom. And again here, the writer tells us that Tom and Peter Crouch were friends, and they learned together at the national school at Lamberthurst. And these two were good friends, though they had different characters and different careers. Peter Crouch huddled down upon the sacks that filled one corner of the shed. A delicious meal of cooking began to come through from the kitchen, and he hoped Mrs. Addis would not deny him a share of the supper when Tom came home, for he was very hungry and he had a long way to go. At that time again, the author tells us, Peter Crouch smelled delicious smell from the kitchen and he thought that Mrs. Addis is a kind woman and surely she would give some part of the meal to him. He had fallen into a kind of helpless doze when he was aroused by the sound of footsteps on the road. For a moment, his poor heart nearly choked him with its beating. They were the keepers. They had guessed where he was with Mrs. Addis, he, his old friend's mother. He had been a fool to come to the cottage, nearly losing his self-control. He shrank into the corner, shivering, half snobbing, but the footsteps went by. The next minute, Mrs. Addis stuck her head into the shade. That was the keepers, she said shortly. I saw them go by. They had lanterns. Maybe it would be better if you slipped out now and went towards Cancerine. You would miss them that way and get over to Kent. There is a London train that comes from Tunbridge Wells at 10 tonight. Now here we see the situation of Peter Crouch. He was waiting in that dark room and he heard sound of the footsteps on the road and he thought that now keepers will come and they will catch him. He lost his self-control. He lost his hope and he was near about sobbing but the footsteps went by and the next minute mrs addis told him that there were keepers and they went away they had lanterns too and also she suggested to leave the place and go towards cancerine cancerine is name of a town where there is a railway station go to that place, railway station, Cancerine, and catch the train, and you may go to London. She suggested to the man, to, to, to this man, that would be a fine thing for me, ma'am, but I haven't the price of a ticket on me. And frankly, Peter Crouch told the lady that the idea is good, but I haven't money for the ticket. She went to one of the kitchen drawers. Here is seven, seven shillings. It will be you up here to London and a bit over for a moment. He did not speak. Then he said, I don't know how to thank you, ma'am. And again, the lady helped him. She gave seven shillings to Peter Crouch. And Peter Crouch said, I don't know 
how to thank you ma'am oh you needn't th needn't thank me i am doing it for tom i hope you won't get into trouble because of this there isn't much fear no one's ever likely to know you have been in this cottage that's why i would sooner you went before tom came back for maybe he would bring a friend with him and that would make trouble and again mrs addis told him that you may go now if my son tom brings a friend with him then there will be situation of trouble she opened the door for him but on the threshold they both stood still for again footsteps could be heard approaching this time from the far south maybe it's tom said mrs addis there is more than one man there and i can hear voices you would better go back she said short she she said shortly wait till they have passed anyway now peter grouch was ready to go to the railway station and they were at the door of the farm house but at the same time they heard footsteps again and the footsteps were approaching at that time mrs addis thought that maybe it's tom but again she thought that there are more than two people so she requested him that you would better go back and wait till they have passed with an unwilling shrug he went back into the little dusty shed which he had come to hate and she locked the door upon him so once again unwillingly without his wish without his desire he went back to the little dusty shed and mrs addis locked him see page number 48 the footsteps drew nearer they came slowly and heavily this time for a moment he thought they would pass also but their momentary dulling was only the crossing of the strip of grass outside the door the next minute there was a knock it was not tom then now peter crouch was locked in dusty and dark room and peter crouch and the lady mrs addis heard sound and the footsteps drew nearer and somebody knocked at the door trembling with anxiety and curiosity peter crouch put his eye to one of the numerous cracks in the door and looked through into the kitchen he saw mrs addis go to the cottage door but before she could open it a man came in quickly and shut it behind him now peter crouch was watching everything through the crack of the door and he saw that mrs addis went to the cottage door and before she could open the door a man quickly entered in the room crouch recognized widler one of the keepers of scutney castle and he felt his hands and feet grow light and cold they knew where he was where sorry they knew where he was then they had followed him they had guessed that he had taken refuge with mrs addis it was all up he was not really hidden there was no place for him to hide directly they opened the inner door they would see him why couldn't he think of things better why wasn't he cleverer at looking after himself like other men his legs suddenly refused to support him and he sat down on the pile of sacks now from the crack peter crouch saw that the man was widler and widler was one of the guards from scutney castle 
now he understood that it is impossible for him to run away from this place they would catch him in this way peter crouch was completely frightened and he thought that it is all over now the man in the kitchen seemed to have some difficulty in saying what he wanted to mrs addis he stood before her silently twisting his cap well what is it she asked i want to speak to you ma'am peter crouch listened straining his ears for his thudding heart nearly drowned the voices in the next room oh no he was sure she would not give him away if only for tom's sake she was a good sort mrs addis now here the man mr widler was unable to speak so he said i want to speak to you ma'am and peter crouch was listening to everything straining his ears and he thought that the lady may tell widler that peter crouch is inside the room well she said sharply as the man remained tongue tied i have brought you bad news ma'am her expression changed and at last widler said ma'am i have brought a bad news for you now her expression changed what it isn't tom is it he is outside said the keeper what do you mean said mrs addis and she moved the door don't ma'am not till i have told you told me what oh be quick man for mercy's sake and she tried to push past to the door now here we see quick dialogue between mrs addis and widler she asked where is tom and they they told the lady he is outside now we see here the woman was ready to run to her son tom there has been a row he said down by cinderwood there was a chap there snaring rabbits and tom was walking with the burmans and me and old crouch we heard a noise and there it was too dark to see who it was and directly he saw us he made off and we are scared him and he let fly with his gun now here the yantar incident was told to mrs addis that there has been a row there has been a row row means a quarrel there has been a quarrel at cinderwood and there was a chap there was a man sneering rabbits and tom burmans old crouch and widler they were at that place and the man ran away with his gun tom said mrs addis the keeper had forgotten his guard and before he could prevent her she had flung open the door the man outside had evidently been waiting for the signal and they came in carrying something which they put down in the middle of the kitchen floor is he dead asked mrs addis without a tear and afterwards mrs addis cried tom and the guard brought dead body of tom and they put it in the kitchen floor is he dead said mrs addis without tears the news was shocking for mrs addis she was unable to weep sorry she was unable to weep now the man nodded they could not find a dry voice like hers in the shed peter crouch had ceased to sweat and tremble strength had come with despair for he knew 
he must despair now. Besides, he no longer wanted to escape from this thing that he had done. Oh, Tom! And I was thinking, it was one of the keepers. Oh, Tom! Now, Peter Crouch saw all these things from the crack of the door. And he understood that he had killed his friend Tom. Now, Peter Crouch becomes emotional. And he feels very sorry for this incident. And it was you that got it. Got it from me. I don't want to live. And yet, life was sweet, for there was a woman at T-shirt. A woman as faithful to him as Tom, who would go with him to the world's end even now. But he must not think of her. He had no right. He must pay with his life for what he had done. Now here, the writer speaks about the feelings and emotions of Peter Crouch. Now here, Peter Crouch remembers a woman who loves him. And also, he thinks that I must pay with my life for what I have done. Mrs. Addis was sitting in the old basket armchair by the fire. One of the men had helped her into it. We will go round to Iron Lash Cottage and ask Mrs. Gain to come down to you. This is a terrible thing to have come to you. And as for the man who did it, we have a middling good guess who he is and he shall hang. Now, the keepers asked Mrs. asked asked to Mrs. Addis that we will go to Iron Lush Cottage and we will bring Mrs. Gain to stay with you. Now, the incident was terrible and surely the killer shall be hanged. Now, in this way, the keepers express their feelings. We didn't see his face, but we have got his gun. He threw it into a bush when he bolted. And I swear that gun belongs to Peter Crouch, who has been up to no good since the day he was sacked for stealing corn. And again, the keepers told. Mrs. Addis, that we have a guess that the gun belongs to Peter Crouch and we will try to punish him. But he couldn't have known it was Tom when he did it. He and Tom always being better friends than he deserved. Peter Crouch was standing upright now, looking through the crack of the door. He saw Mrs. Addis struggle to her feet and stand by the table, looking down on the dead man's face. He saw her put her hand into her apron pocket, where she had thrust the key of the shade. Now here, Peter Crouch becomes very sad on the death of Tom, and he observes everything happening in the kitchen. Mrs. Addis was looking at the face of dead Tom and he also looks at her apron pocket where she had put the key of the shade. The Burmans have gone after Crouch, said Widdler, nervously breaking the silence. They had thought he had broken through the old iron lash way. There is no chance of his having been by here. You haven't seen him tonight, ma'am? Now here we see dialogue between Widdler and Mrs. Addis. Widdler asked Mrs. Addis that you haven't seen him tonight, ma'am? There was a pause. No, 
said Mrs. Addis. I haven't seen him, not since Tuesday. She took her hand out of her apron's pocket. Now, surprisingly, she replied, no. And also, she told Widler that I haven't seen him, not since Tuesday. Well, we will be getting around and page Mrs. Gain reckon you would be glad to have her. Mrs. Addis nodded. Will you carry him in there first? And she pointed to the bedroom door. Now here, Widler told Mrs. Addis that we will bring Mrs. Gain here with you. Mrs. Addis nodded. And also, Mrs. Addis requested Widler that will you carry him in there first. And in this way, the dead body of Tom was carried to the bedroom from kitchen. The men picked up the stretcher and carried it into the next room. Then, silently, each rung the mother by the hand and went away. Now, showing sympathy, all these men went away by putting the dead body in the bedroom. She waited until they had shut the door. Then she came towards the shed. Crouch once more fell a shivering. He couldn't bear it. No, he would rather be hanged than face Mrs. Addis. He heard the key turn in the lock and he nearly screamed. Now all the keepers went away and Mrs. Addis came to the shade of the door. Now at that time, Crouch became emotional. He was shivering, he was trembling because of fear and he thought that he would rather be hanged than face Mrs. Addis. Now he heard the key turn in the lock and he was about to scream, but she did not come in. She merely unlocked the door, then crossed the kitchen with a heavy, dragging footstep and shut herself in the room where Tom was. But Mrs. Addis did not went to the shed. She only unlocked the door and with her heavy foot she went to the bedroom where there was Tom's dead body. Peter Crouch knew what he must do. The only thing she wanted him to do, the only thing he could possibly do, he opened the door and silently went out. Now Peter Crouch understood what to do. Without talking to the lady, silently Mrs. Crouch went away. Now in this way, the story ends here. The story is a story of an ideal mother. She is a kind mother and she proves that forgiveness is a great human quality. Forgiveness provides an opportunity to the, culp to the culprit to change the behavior. From this story, we get the message of forgiveness. Dear students, Remember, revenge is a type of wild justice and forgiveness is a great human quality. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.